Hello students, let's learn about our environment. Look at the pictures alongside. You can easily name all these things. What materials are they made from? Where do we find these materials? What are the uses of these things? Take a look around. There are many things around us. They form our environment. There are stones and rocks and soil. There are rivers and streams and lakes. There is air. There are hills and mountains, there are jungles, there are fields and houses and roads and also barren lands. We also see many different animals around us. Different types of trees and bushes and climbers make our environment beautiful. We too are a part of this environment. Now let us look at a stone and a sparrow in our surroundings and compare them. A stone remains where it is. Its place changes only if someone picks it up and moves it. It doesn't eat, so it doesn't grow bigger. It doesn't have babies either. It's not the same with sparrows. They build nests. They move here and there on their own. They eat insects and grains. That is why they grow. They lay eggs in nests. Little sparrows hatch from these eggs. Sparrows take a lot of care of their young ones. Now let's understand why do we see these differences between the sparrow and the stone. The sparrow is a living thing and the stone is a non-living thing. Things in our surroundings form two groups, living things and non-living things. Living things are of two kinds, plants and animals. Animals are babies and seedlings grow from seeds. The seedlings then grow into plants. This tells us that plants are living things. Plants do move. For example, when a bud blooms into a flower, its petals open. But movements of plants are not so easily seen. Plants also need food. Of course, plants do not move from place to place like animals do. Their roots hold them down in one place. This is a big difference between plants and animals. Let's see the relationship between all things in the environment. Water and air are a part of the environment. All living things need them. Living things also need food. They get their food from the environment. Whatever living things need to survive, they get from their environment. Birds build nests. They need cotton, twigs and threads to build them. They get these things from the environment. Human beings use so many things from the environment. We get cotton, wool and silk from our environment. We weave cloth from them. We make things like mats, baskets, paper from materials in our environment. We build houses using clay and stone and wood. These materials too we get from our environment. The seeds of some plants are scattered by the wind. As a result, seedlings of those plants grow in new places. Thus, plants too get help from their environment. Living things take many things from their environment. So let's see what effect does that have on the environment. Animals like vultures and foxes eat the flesh of dead animals. Thus, they clean the environment while they satisfy their hunger. Remains of dead animals decay. They mix with the soil. Leaves fall off trees. They too rot and get mixed in the soil. This makes the soil fertile. Plants get nourishment from fertile soil. Thus, living things bring about changes in non-living things too. Do you know? A sheep's body is covered with wool. The sheep feeds on leaves of shrub. As it does so, the seeds of some shrub can get caught in its wool. When the sheep goes somewhere else, the seeds may fall off there. Thus, the sheep helps new seedlings of the shrub to grow in many different places. In this way, the sheep which is an animal and the shrub which is a plant help each other. Always remember, the needs of all living things are fulfilled by things in their environment. Such things should not be allowed to go waste. We must take care that we do not cause harm to the environment. Thank you and please like, share and subscribe.